What are the primary causes? I submit that there are three. Stress, inflammation, and hyperinsulinemia. So by stress, understand please that you are hearing that word coming from a professor who teaches a graduate class in endocrinology. I can't help but look at human health through the lens of hormones. It is my favorite subject. And so I define stress I look at stress as an endocrine phenomenon or a hormone-based phenomenon. And these are two hormones that you're probably very familiar with. You're all very familiar with cortisol. Um, it is a widely accepted villain, not entirely fair, but that's how it's viewed. And then epinephrine, sometimes known as adrenaline, which you perhaps are more familiar with. These hormones actually have practically nothing in common. They come from different cell types. They're created on v in very different ways. They're transported through the blood in completely different ways. They act on target cells in completely different ways. Almost the only thing they have in common is that they both seek to increase blood glucose and do so very, very quickly. So if cortisol goes up, blood glucose will follow very quickly. If epinephrine goes up, glucose will go up as well, even more quickly than with cortisol. That is the one thing they have in common. But you can see that begins to put them at odds with insulin, who is now struggling and working harder and harder to push glucose down. And so the more these stress hormones are eliciting an upward pressure on the blood sugar, the harder insulin has to work to push it back down. Thus, we have a state of insulin resistance. Now, what about inflammation? If some of you are going to be diligent students and look into some of these papers, you'll find some of mine in there. This was largely the focus of my entire postdoctoral fellowship with Duke, and we followed it up in some ways that I'll mention here. But anytime cytokines are elevated, the body will become less insulin sensitive or more insulin resistant. Now, cytokines are basically hormones that signal inflammation, the activation of the immune system, which we, of course, need. None of these things are bad. Stress is not bad. We need stress or we would be dead as a species and an animal, uh, as a life form. We need inflammation, otherwise we'd be dead. We could never defend ourselves or heal and recover. Th these are all essential. It's just too much of a, of a good thing, if you will. And in the case of cytokines, these, pro inf these, these inflammatory kind of signaling hormones, this doesn't just happen when the body is sick, although it matters. If someone has a cold or a fever or a flu, if they're wearing a continuous glucose monitor or they're diabetic, they will find that they have to treat themselves with much more insulin. They become insulin resistant. But less obvious instances also apply here. Like when fat cells get too big, they become very pro-inflammatory. And it was tremendously difficult for me not to include that in this lecture because most of the cells I study is fat cells. I'm a fat scientist, but I figured I just, that would be a tangent too big and so I would lose you forever. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I would, and we would gleefully be skipping down that rabbit hole for the entire night because it's such a cool topic. But diesel exhaust particles, as they are inhaled, we just published another paper on that topic. Cigarette smoke induces inflammation that causes insulin resistance. And autoimmune disorders. Uh, it's what's interesting, one of these studies I'm citing shows this. Autoimmune diseases will ebb and flow. And they'll, they'll be really aggressive and active, and then they subside, and they're quiet for a time. As the autoimmune disease is turned on or off, so too is the insulin resistance. It tracks very, very closely.